Today's Invitation Day, the day right before the end of the rains retreat, where the monks, instead of chanting the Bali Mukha, invite one another that if anyone has seen or heard or suspected that they've done anything against the rules that they haven't made amends for, they're willing to listen to the accusation. The usual pattern of the rest of the year is if one monk wants to make an accusation of another monk, he first has to ask leave of that monk to make the accusation, and the other monk has the right to say no. But on this day, everybody has to be open to accusations. After all, it's the end of the rains retreat. The monks have lived together for three months. They're in a good position to know both the accused and the accuser, in case there is an accusation. And they're in a good position to, to pass judgment. And if it turns out the accused is violent, then the accuser gets to skip town tomorrow without breaking the reins. But having this day it's, is in line with an important principle of the Dharma, which is that you be open to criticism. This is how we learn. As the Buddha said, if someone points out your faults, you should regard that person as someone who's pointed out treasure. And this shows you something you can do to work on the purity of your actions. Because we are not to just mean well, but also be skillful. And also it helps to have some, someone from the outside look at your behavior and point out to your areas where you may not be totally honest with yourself. So this is how we learn. And it's interesting also that when the Buddha talks about the conditions for developing goodwill as a meditation topic. He points out that one of them is being willing to take criticism, easily taking criticism. It's an interesting thought that your goodwill for others, if it's going to be genuine, has to be coupled with your own willingness to take criticism. Part of it may simply be that if you're willing to take criticism, you are more likely to be careful in your actions. And to treat other people with respect. Which means in that case that your goodwill is not hypocritical. It's not just a thought. It's carried out in your actions. So being willing to take criticism is good for you and for the people around you. I know during my time with the John Fuhr, I'd never been criticized so much in my life. Staying at Watama City was like I was being watched all the time, and the slightest false move, lightning came down. It was because I trusted in his motives, that I didn't run away. I'm glad I didn't, because I learned a lot. It's like being in school. The teachers you like the least are the ones who are strictest, and that, yet those are usually the ones you learn the most from. There's an example in the canon, Mahagasa, about criticizing a non venerable Nanda. Everybody liked Ananda. And to this day, everybody likes Ananda. Even books have been written complaining about Mahakas, about coming down to Ananda. After all, Ananda was such a nice guy. Why was Mahakas so, sh so sharp with him? But you look at the result. All those years with the Buddha, who was critical of Ananda from time to time, generally was pretty gentle in his chiding. But Ananda never made any advances in his practice. He became a stream mender by listening to somebody else. 
teach the Dhamma during his time with the Buddha, partly because there was just so much time taken up with the duties of being the attendant. He didn't really have time to look after his own practice. The Buddha came down hard at him once. That was when he had hinted many, many times that it was possible for him to stay on. And then Nanda didn't give him the invitation to stay until it was too late. But even then, his criticism was not too sharp. He just said, look, the fault was yours. You didn't ask. That's all. But it was in the few months after the Buddha passed away, Mahagasapa came down hard on Ananda for several, re several reasons. It was finally through Mahagasapa's criticism that Venerable Ananda became an Arahant. So when you look at our own practice, we all would like to be the horse that the, treat <coughs> excuse me, the trainer treats nicely. But in some cases, it's the case that we have to be treated harshly before we really respond. But in any event, the willingness to be open about your mistakes and to take criticism well, that's one of the prerequisites for really practicing the Dharma, and practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, not in accordance with your, with your own preferences. So it's a good principle in general to be open to criticism. Among the rules for the monks is one that says, if you're being criticized, you have to show respect for the person who's giving the criticism. Even if it's wrong, you don't show disrespect. Because if you show disrespect, then people are likely not to point out your faults to you anymore. And then you wouldn't have anybody to point out treasure to you. So take criticism with respect. Be open to it. Accept it with respect. Then, of course, you're free to decide whether or not it's valid or not. But it's the respect that allows you to get the criticism to begin with. that treasure that's often so hard to find. <laughs>